the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard of arjuna's trip to the heavens and his encounter with urvasi dapsara while arjuna was spending his days in the heavens learning music dance and the use of indra's weapons the rest of the pandava brothers were leading their austere life in the kamyaka forest the hardship was taking its toll on their health and fortitude bhima would often become impatient and implored yudhishthira to attack the kauravas yudhishthira would patiently try to quell his anger and try to give moral justification for his decision arjuna's absence was also another cause for their grief his presence always gave the brothers the confidence to deal with any adversity yudhishthira also worried about the well-being of his brother arjuna they didn't hear from him for years and wondered if he's safe and sound one day the great sage rishi brihadaswa visited the pandavas at the hermitage yudhishthira greeted him with respect and offered him food and drink the rishi noticed that yudhishthira was not his usual self he looked morose and tired brihadaswa asked my dear yudhishthira why do you look so sad what's bothering you yudhishthira looked at the rishi and said o oh, rishi i am the most unfortunate and ill-fated man this earth has ever seen my actions have caused great suffering to those i love and care i failed to take care of my people who depend on me it pains to see my brothers and draupadi go through this hardship only because of me i sent my dear brother arjuna to the far northern lands to fetch weapons and haven't heard from him since i don't know whether he is dead or alive at times i feel like i am the greatest loser and a disgrace to the kuru dynasty rishi brihadaswa held yudhishthira's hand and said don't despair my son have faith in yourself and your brothers i am sure you'll come out victorious one day haven't you heard of nala the king of nishada the handsome and virtuous king had to go through hell on earth because of kali the god of the dark age just like you he lost all his wealth and kingdom in a game of dice to pushkara he went mad and deserted his beautiful wife damayanti alone without any belonging the poor king wandered naked in the forest still he recovered from his misfortune and got back everything he lost in comparison i would say you're much better off you have the support of your valiant brothers and your wife draupadi you have powerful friends like krishna and king drupad you should not feel sorry at all stay on the path of dharma and you will emerge victorious rishi brihadaswa's words calmed yudhishthira he bowed down to the rishi's feet and said bless me rishi such that i can have the courage and patience to stick to the path of righteousness a few days later a brahmana sage named lomash arrived at the pandavas hermitage he embraced yudhishthira and said i have great news for you i was at the palace of indra and met your brother arjuna he is doing fine he requested me to tell you that lord shiva has gifted him the pashupat weapon 
He has also acquired several other powerful weapons from Indra. The Pandava brothers were ecstatic to hear the good news. Yudhishthira touched the feet of the great Rishi and said, O oh, great sage, you have brought to us the most wonderful news. Tell us when is our dear brother coming back? The Rishi smiled and said, Lord Indra has asked me to inform you that Arjuna will come back to you soon after he completes an important assignment. He suggests you use this time to visit the various places of pilgrimage around the country and learn the myths and legends about them. It will be an illuminating and inspirational experience for you. He asked me to accompany you on these pilgrimages. That's a wonderful idea, said Yudhishthira. We are tired of living in this Kammeka forest without our brother Arjuna. A visit to the holy places will keep us engaged and enrich our knowledge about this great land of ours. Lomash said, Then let's prepare for the journey. I suggest you travel light, since the path is quite perilous. Only the toughest of tough can make this journey. Yudhishthira understood what the Rishi meant. He went to the Brahmins and Rishis who accompanied them and said, Friends, we have lived together in this forest for so long and you have always stood by our side. Now we plan to embark on a pilgrimage. Rishi Lomash will be our guide. However, he warns me that this journey won't be smooth. The road is difficult and full of unknown dangers. We may have to climb mountains, cross through deserts, travel through extreme weather conditions. Food and drink can become scarce. I cannot subject you to this hardship. I request you go back to Hastinapur. I am sure King Dhritarashtra would welcome you with open arms and provide you with all your needs. If he doesn't, then go to Panchala and King Drupad would accept you for sure. The news saddened the Brahmins, and most of them left for Hastinapur with a heavy heart, but few refused to go back. They said, O oh, great Pandava, we don't care for any dangers or any hardship. We will accompany you on your journey. Please, please take us with you. And Yudhishthira couldn't turn them down. Soon after, on an auspicious day, the Pandavas, along with Draupadi, their priest Thaumya and the accompanying Brahmins, began their journey with Rishi Lomash on the lead. After visiting Naimisharanya, Prayag and others, the Pandava entourage arrived in Manimati, the hermitage of Rishi Agastya. Yudhishthira was curious about Agastya. He asked, Rishi Lomash, I heard that Agastya was a great sage, but I don't know what his greatness was about and why his ashram is a place of pilgrimage. Lomash sat down and said, Sit down, and I will tell you the legend of Agastya. Agastya was a powerful and learned sage. He had acquired great yogic powers from years of hard training and meditation. One day, while walking through the mountains, he heard some painful cries coming from a dark cave. Curious, he went inside the cave and after climbing down through rocks and crevices, he reached an open space. There he saw several spirits hanging upside down from the roof of the cave. The spirits were crying and writhing in pain. Agastya asked, Who are you? And why are you crying? The spirit said, We are your ancestors. We suffer because we have no descendant who could save us from this hell. Agastya felt bad. He asked, Please tell me, what can I do to relieve you from this suffering? The spirit said, Marry 
and bear a son and we would be free from this hell. Agastha replied, don't worry, I will fulfill your wish. Agastya then began to look for a proper bride. After a long and arduous search, he found the woman worthy of him. It was Lopamudra, the daughter of the king of Vidarva. He went to the king and asked for his daughter's hand in marriage. The king was not very keen on giving his beautiful daughter Lopamudra to a poor ascetic who lives in the forest. But he knew of Agastya's power and was afraid to refuse him either. Lopamudra intervened and said, Father, it will be my honour to be the wife of the great sage Agastya. Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. Soon, Lopamudra married Agastya, left all her expensive dresses and jewellery, and accompanied Agastya to his hermitage, wearing only a deer skin. When Agastya wanted to have a son from Lopamudra, she said, O great sage, I will give you a son, but I want my child to be born in the same opulence and luxury that I enjoyed. Agastya said, My dear, I would like to fulfill your desire, but I cannot acquire wealth by harming others. Let me see what I can do. Agastya went to the king Srutarba and said, O king, I need some money. Please give me some money without hurting anybody. The king said, Rishi, it would be my honor to offer you some of my wealth. But my accountants tell me that our expenses are same as our earnings and I have no excess. If I have to give you money, I'll have to tax my people. Agastya said, No, I cannot accept that. Overtaxing your people would cause them hardship. Agastya left and went to other kings. But they all had the same problem. Their income equaled their expenses and they had no excess to spare. One of the kings then suggested, Why don't you go to the giant king Ilwal? He is one of the richest king in this area and he should be able to help you. Ilwal, the giant king, had magical powers. Once he prayed to a Brahmin sage to give him a son. The sage refused to oblige him. Angry Ilwal decided to kill any Brahmin who came his way. But he used a novel way to murder his victims. Whenever a Brahmin visited him, he would call his brother Vatapi and with his magical powers transform him into a goat. He would then slaughter the goat and cook its meat for his Brahmin guest. After the guest finished his meal, Ilwal would call out his brother, Vatapi, come out from our guest, please come out. And Vatapi would return to his goat form and come out piercing the Brahmin guest's belly and killing him instantly. When Agastya visited, Ilwal welcomed him with folded palms and invited him to have dinner. Agastya agreed. Ilwal then began his old trick. He transformed his brother Vatapi to a goat, cooked his meat and served Agastya. Agastya ate all the meat to his earth's content. When Ilwal called out, Vatapi, my brother, come out! But nothing happened. Vatapi did not come out from Agastya's belly. Ilwal was surprised. He saw Agastya sitting calm and smiling with his hand on his belly. Ilwal yelled few more times, Vatapi, where are you? Come out from your hiding. Come out now. But nothing happened. Agastya smiled and said, My dear Ilwal, how can Vatapi come out? I have already digested him. Ilwal was flabbergasted. He bowed down to Agastya and said, O oh sage, pardon me for my sin. Please tell me, what can I do to serve you? Agastya said, Ilwal, 
I hear you have lots of riches. Share with me some of your excess wealth without hurting anybody. Ilwal agreed to give Agastya 20,000 gold coins, 20,000 cows, a golden chariot and horses to draw the chariot. Agastya returned to Lopamudra with his acquired wealth and said, My dear, now tell me, what do you want? A thousand sons? A hundred sons? Or only one son who is better than a thousand sons? Lopamudra said, I want only one son. One who would be as strong and as learned as thousand sons. In due course of time, she gave birth to a bright boy child named Dridhasyu. This, my dear Pandavas, is where the great sage Agastya lived. Lomash concluded his story. But Yudhishthira was eager to hear more. He asked, Rishi Lomash, I understand Agastya had caused few more miracles in his life. Please tell us of those incidents. Loma said, Once, the demon clan named Kaleya, led by Vrityasura, attacked the gods in the heavens. The tormented gods went to Brahma and asked for a way to destroy the demon. Brahma said that a weapon made from Rishi Dadhicha's bones could only kill Vrityasura. Lord Vishnu led the gods to Dadhich and asked for his bones. Dadich was happy to oblige Lord Vishnu and gave his life. The gods took Dadich's bones and asked Vishwakarma to build a weapon. Vishwakarma built a powerful thunderbolt from Dadich's bones. Armed with the thunderbolt, Indra and the gods attacked Brityasura. During the fight, Indra hurled the thunderbolt at Brityasura and killed the evil giant. The death of Brityasura caused a havoc in the demon army and they all fled under the sea. However, at night, the demons would emerge from the oceans and kill the Brahmins and hermits living near the ocean. Indra and the gods then went to Agastya to ask for his help. Agastya went to the seaside and in one huge gulp drank the waters of the ocean, leaving it bone dry. The demons were all exposed and the gods killed them all. Indra then asked Agastya to throw up the water he drank to fill the oceans back again. Agastya said, I am sorry. The water is all digested. You must try some other option. The gods were in a fix. How could the oceans remain dry? Brahma said, Don't worry. Many years from now, King Bhagirath would once again fill up the oceans with water. Agastya was revered not only by humans, demons and gods, but also by the mountains, rivers and oceans. Once, the Vindhya mountains called the sun and said, I want you to circle me, just as you circle the earth. The sun said, I don't circle the earth of my own will. I do it as per the wish of the Almighty. Vindhya was angry. The mountain began to grow higher and higher to obstruct the path of the sun. Vindhya's antics worried the gods. Once again, they had to ask Agastya to help resolve the crisis. Agastya went to the foothills of the Vindhya mountains and said, My dear Vindhya, I need to cross you and travel to the south to finish some urgent duties. I request you not to grow till I come back. Vindhya couldn't say no to the revered sage and stopped growing. Agastya crossed the mountains and went to the south but he never came back. Hence, Vindhya couldn't grow anymore either. Lomash looked at Yudhishthira and his brothers and said, My dear Pandavas, pay your respect to the great sage Agastya. 
His blessings would help you remove any obstacles that come on your path to victory. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bomek. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.